my name is Joanna. I'm one of the midwives that works here at South Tyneside Birthing Centre. And we're also go between South Tyneside and Sunderland. Hopefully you've watched the other classes so you know a little bit about what this is going to be like and what the format is. But I'm part of the Parentcraft team here at South Tyneside and we run Parentcraft classes and this class is about postnatal care of the mum and the newborn. So here we go. Firstly, congratulations. Obviously, this is our last class. So you've gone through labour, you've gone through delivery and now you have your beautiful, fantastic baby. So well done you. So firstly, what we're going to discuss is your postnatal stay in hospital once you've had the baby. Hopefully, if everything goes well and is nice and straightforward following the birth of your baby, we do at the moment advocate for an early discharge. Um, your partner stays with you throughout labour, delivery and your postnatal stay. And hopefully six to eight hours after birth of the baby, if everything's well and you're happy, you will be able to go home. If for whatever reason you felt you wanted to stay longer in hospital, that's also fine. If it was due to feeding problems or you felt you needed some more support or guidance, your birthing partner can stay with you at the birthing centre or on delivery suite at most high risk units for the first night or first 24 hours. However, after that, if it is medically indicated for yourself or the baby to be transferred to a postnatal ward or to stay in hospital longer, it is normally that you are just with yourself and the baby. And this is due to the current COVID-19 guidelines. If you're unsure about this or wanted more information, please ring up the unit you're booked. And at the time this has taken place, the midwives will discuss this with you thoroughly as we know that it can be a very stressing time for women and their partners. Postnatal visiting. So once you're discharged from hospital, you used to get visits on your first day home, visits on day five and visits on day 10. So if you've had a baby before, this might be what you're used to. However, due to the current COVID-19 guidelines, instead of this, you will get a telephone call from your community midwife on your first day home. If you felt you needed or wanted a visit, that service is still available and the community midwife will come and visit you at home. You will get your day five postnatal visit as this will be your heel prick and your reway of the baby. Around day 10, you can either have a visit or gain another telephone call from your community midwife. This will be the end of your community midwifery care and this is where your care transfers to the health visitor. Throughout this period, there is breastfeeding support, feeding support, postnatal helplines and contact numbers available. And if you ever needed anything, either contact your community midwife or your hospital where you've given birth. This discusses your body after giving birth. Your body has been through a journey over the past nine months. It has completely transformed and developed to grow and deliver your beautiful baby. It takes nine months to grow and develop and your body takes time to go back to your pre-pregnancy state. So please be kind and be aware of the changes your body is going to go through. Firstly, when you've given birth, you will bleed after birth. It'll be like a period at first and then it will decrease in like the amount and it will decrease in the colour from bright red to brownish. Some people can bleed for a couple of weeks following delivery and this is completely normal. Ask your community midwives and they will often talk through the colour of your bleeding and the colour of your loss. It's normal to pass small clots. Anything bigger than a 50 pence piece, however, contact the unit where you've had the baby or contact your community midwife. You will need to use sanitary pads for this bleeding after you've given birth. And we would recommend larger sanitary pads like this one, not small ones. They need to be larger ones as they are more absorbent and more comfortable. We do not recommend that you use tampons once you've given birth because you may potentially have had stitches and it also increases your chance of infection. There's a little slide on there that shows you this bleeding is due to your womb contracting back down 
and to recover from a normal vaginal delivery normally takes six to ten days and to recover from a cesarean section or to recover from an instrumental delivery this can be significantly longer. So now I'm just going to talk through some common, not complications, but common effects you might find after you've given birth or common things that happen to you postnatally. Firstly, it is very common to have swelling. This is due to fluid. It can pool in your hands. It can pool in your feet. Often you are warm throughout your labour and delivery and this is completely normal or sometimes you're immobile for a long period throughout your labour and delivery. Mention if you have swelling to your community midwife or to where the hospital you are at. They'll check your blood pressure, check your urine and they will also check the swelling. To help swelling in your hands and in your legs, be nice and mobile, keep active. We used to say lie in bed after you've had a baby but it's completely the opposite now. As long as you've had rest and you are having rest periods, we'd like you to be up, we'd like you to be mobile and drinking plenty and this will help flush that swelling out. Urination. Urination is so important after you've had a baby and midwives are obsessed with your urination. We'll be asking you how much and how often you go in as this is an important sign that your bladder is functioning properly and normally after you've had the baby. We like to measure the amount of urine and keep an eye on how much and it's again important. This is when we will discuss things like pelvic floor exercises with you as well. Constipation once you've had a baby it's very common simply because the labour process itself can cause you to be dehydrated. You might have had medication throughout the labour process that causes constipation. You may need things like iron tablets or you might have had something like codeine. Again these can affect your bowels and cause constipation. Don't be embarrassed about any of these things because most women have all of these complications and it's so important that you just say and that you're open and honest with your midwife so we can help you and give you things to ease these symptoms rather than suffering in silence. Constipation, the number one thing is dehydration, so drink plenty of water. If you felt that you were drinking plenty, you were having a high fibre diet and you were still constipated, we can give you medication that helps with constipation. Energy levels. Energy levels are so important and once you've had a baby, you will feel a deplete in your energy levels. At first, you get a spike in your oxytocin and you get this massive rush of adrenaline and happy hormones when you've had your baby. And sometimes you can't even sleep because you're just so excited and you want to look at your baby. You're so proud of your body, so proud of what you've done and you can't believe your baby's here. After that speak of that big pike of adrenaline, sometimes your energy will decrease. You'll be sleep deprived, you won't have eaten and drank properly in labour and sometimes even in a latent phase, so your body will be lacking energy. It's so important at this point to rest as much as you can, to eat and drink, to have a high fibre diet and to have a diet that is healthy to have a healthy diet and don't just snack on little things like junk food and don't go for loads of caffeine it is really important you get the vitamins and minerals from your food as that what's your body's craving sometimes your energy levels might be low due to a reduction in iron and your community midwife will check this by checking your iron levels and sometimes you might need iron level substance like supplements stitches it's quite common that women will need stitches following birth of the baby and these stitches are often self-dissolvable. So they'll dissolve between day five and day 10 and it's routine practice that the community midwife will check these stitches to make sure they're healing properly. Stitches go through a healing process. It's important to keep them clean, keep them dry, change your sanitary pads often, change your knickers often. If you notice any pain, swelling, redness or smell please inform your community midwife as these are forms and these are signs of infection and we would sometimes treat with antibiotics for these things so this slide is all about fertility it is a myth that you can't fall pregnant straight after having a baby your fertility actually returns within three weeks in some people it can be sooner and some people later but you are fertile after you've had a baby 
It's a myth that you can't fall pregnant when breastfeeding, although it does reduce your fertility levels, you can still fall pregnant. It is really important that you consider contraception very early on after you've just had a baby because if you fall pregnant quickly after you've had a baby, it can cause a lot of stress on your body. The midwife will discuss your contraception options with you before you leave the hospital and your GP will also assess this again at your six week appointment check. If you have any questions about what contraceptive methods to use or what is safe for you, your body and your baby following delivery, please ask and we will discuss this with you. But there is some methods discussed on the slide. So this slide, we're gonna discuss your feelings and your emotions. Postnatally, once you've had a baby, often people say they feel like their whole world has changed and they feel like them as a person has changed as well. And it can be a really difficult time for some people to deal with emotionally. Yes, it can be fantastic having this new baby, but like we've already said, your body's gone through changes, your energy levels are decreased, and you're very sleep deprived. Your baby will not know the difference between night and day. At first, babies like to feed every four hours, and they often go either having a wet or dirty nappy every three to four hours as well. So that's a limited amount of sleep. What we will say is take time out for yourself if you can, and if you have a partner or you're living with a relative, take turns looking after the baby. When your baby's asleep, I know it's an old fashioned thing to say, but if your baby's asleep, you try and sleep or get some rest as well. Take time out for yourself. If it's a longer shower, if it's just to watch a half an hour program that you enjoy, if it's just, you know, having that cup of tea on the sofa, watching something you like, if it's a conversation or a FaceTime to your mom or your sister, or your best friend, take that time that helps boost your endorphins and you need that every day. And that small endorphin boost will keep you remembering the person that you were before you had the baby as well. Diet is so important. Make sure you have a high energy diet once you've given birth. Don't forget to eat yourself. Often people feed the baby and are caring for the baby and they'll have gone 12 hours and they realize they haven't eaten anything. So drinking and eating is number one dehydration as well especially if you're breastfeeding you need to have a good pint of water with you every time you're breastfeeding your baby keep sipping water as you don't want to become dehydrated so now we're going to talk about feeding your baby the number one thing that i will say it is entirely your choice how you decide to feed your baby it is not up to us as midwives it's not up to your relatives it's not up to your mom your dad your sisters your aunties uncles it's up to you how you feed your baby if you want a breastfeed or you want a bottle feed we will completely support you in that decision at the moment, there is still breastfeeding support at home um, and all you need to do is contact your local community midwives and they will provide that support for you. We'll also give you feeding advice in hospital and whether you're breast or bottle feeding, we will make sure you are happy feeding your baby and your baby is feeding well before we discharge your home. How often to feed your baby? I think people are often surprised at this, but newborn babies often like to feed quite often. If you're breast or bottle feeding, we'd still say to demand feed your baby as much as possible, and that means baby led feeding. So breastfeeding, we will say your baby is in control of the feeding. We like the baby to feed as often as possible, but no more than sort of four to five hours between breastfeeds and for sort of 15 minutes onwards. At first, breastfeeding babies tend to cluster feed, so they might feed for five, 10 minutes, and they might do that every hour, and then it'll settle into a more regular pattern once your milk has come in, and that's around day three to five, where they'll maybe feed for 45 minutes, to an hour sometimes and that'll last them sort of four to five hours between feeds. Again, your midwife will help you with this every step of the way. For bottle fed babies, they normally take between one to two ounces at first and we'll gradually increase this and this is every sort of 
two to four hours depending on the amount they take. We sometimes discuss it in mills as well. So if your baby took a smaller amount, so say one ounce, maybe 30 mils, they might only go sort of two hours between feeds. If they took two ounces, if they took nearer 60 mils, they might go closer to the four hours. We will say, please do not let a brand new baby just sleep through the night and think, oh, that's great, my baby slept. Sometimes your baby hasn't developed those feeding cues. So it is important that you don't wait any more than sort of four to five hours and you do wake your baby for a feed. So this is just a slightly more detail about feeding your baby. The little picture shows the size of your baby's stomach. At first, your newborn baby's stomach will always say is about the size of a marble. Your baby's tummy is actually really small, so the baby does not need to feed in large amounts. And sometimes overfeeding the baby can actually make the baby sick or a little bit uncomfortable. That little picture shows the amount and the size of the baby's tummy. And as the baby grows and develops, how much milk the baby will need. But even from that picture, it shows you when the baby's a few months old, your baby's stomach's still only the size of an egg. So your baby is small and it does not need anywhere near the amount of food that we do. The important thing to remember is you might sometimes feel like you are always feeding your baby, like it's you've finished a feed and it's time for the next feed. As your baby grows and develops, the baby will feed less often and take smaller amounts. But in them early stages, you just have to stick with it and follow the guidance of the midwife who's looking after you. And also please remember to follow the guidance of sterilization preparing bottles and sterilizing all equipment as this is really important as improperly sterilized equipment can introduce bacteria into the baby's tummy and sometimes make babies poorly. So please read your individual sterilizer that you have bought or if it's one of these milk prep machines make sure you've had a practice making up bottles or you've had a practice sterilizing things like nipple shields anything that you're going to use with your baby practice using the sterilizer first before you then give the baby that equipment. So one of the most important things to learn is your baby's feeding cues. Your baby cannot tell you that they're hungry, they can't speak to you and say, mom, dad, I'm hungry, feed me. They have to do it with this non-verbal communication. You will learn these instinctively. However, on slide shown is some of a baby's feeding cues to show you that baby's hungry. Often they'll wriggle around, they'll start moving, they might start putting their hands in their mouth, they'll start doing a little suckling noise, opening and closing their mouth and occasionally as well they do cry. These are all signs that your baby is hungry and that you should start thinking about feeding your baby. Once you start to recognise your baby's feeding cues, you can actually feed your baby, recognise your baby's hungry before the baby actually starts to cry or becomes distressed. So have a little look at these pictures and sort of try and remember them because it is really important. So now we're going to talk about nappy changing, which is obviously one of the most important things you can do to care for your baby. And at first you might feel like all you're doing is changing your baby's nappy. But that is because sometimes at first babies might need to be changed up to 12 times a day. So you can obviously feel like you're going through nappies and that you're changing your baby often. Your baby's nappy needs to be changed depending on your baby. So if your baby has sensitive skin, we would recommend you change the nappy often so that your baby isn't sitting in a wet or dirty nappy that could aggravate your baby's skin. The type of feeding depends on how often you change to the nappy. Often breastfed babies will have a bowel movement after every feed, um, whereas bottle fed babies might have one or two poos a day. As your baby gets older, the amount of stools your baby will pass reduces to normally about one to two a day and the amount of wet nappies will reduce to about five or six a day. But at first you can feel like you're changing your baby's nappy very often, but this is completely normal. It is a sign of well-being if your baby is weighing and pooing as it shows they are hydrated and it's shown that they get what they need from their food. So. The essentials for nappy changing, we're just going to go through a little list with you that is provided on the screen. Just because sometimes when parents come in, they often have forgotten things or they're not too sure what they actually need. We recommend that when you're changing your baby's nappy, you put your baby down on a changing mat or on a towel like that we've got here. 
we recommend that you use cotton wool with warm water and we call this like a dip bowl or a bowl that you use. We don't recommend that you use baby wipes or any wipes on your baby's skin, especially for the first six weeks of life as your baby's skin is really sensitive and sometimes if you use wipes it can actually dry your baby's skin out. So we recommend that you wipe your baby, chuck the cotton wool away, wipe the baby, chuck the cotton wool away. You might go through quite a lot of cotton wool but it is the safest and the most sensitive way to change your baby's nappy. Other things that you need with you is nappies, obviously. We do recommend that you bring in first size or newborn nappies or the first pack of nappies. New nappies actually have this line down the front that actually says if your baby has a wet or dirty nappy. I wouldn't la like rely on that. I would often smell your baby or have a look in the baby's nappy to see if it's wet or dirty but this new line can be quite handy and it is shown on one of our pictures. So that is what we recommend you bring in some sort of bowl, but we will provide it in the hospital, cotton wool, nappy, and some sort of change in that. It is often at first, your baby will cry when you're changing your baby's nappy because you're exposing the baby to the air and it's quite cold for them. So as quick as you can change the nappy, the better as it stops your newborn baby getting cold. Sometimes this means doing it in teams, so both of you is doing it together. This slide, obviously when we used to do the parent craft, we would get with doll and we'd do an example, but this slide shown just shows you step by step how to change a baby's nappy. It's really important. One of the things that we'd say is that you clean the poo from the bottom and that you don't take the poo up into the bits and pieces of your little girl or your little boy. You don't want to spread that poo, so you make sure you clean it downwards. If you've got a little boy, a really important tip is that you point his little penis downwards in the nappy or you point it downwards while you obviously trying to change his nappy because if not sometimes you might find that they like to start weighing and they will weigh up and it will go up and all over you which does happen in the maternity unit very often I have been weed on lots of times so that is just a handy little tip but as I said there's a little step by step of nappy changing guide if you have never changed a nappy before do not be afraid to ask us as midwives will show you or the maternity care assistants or anybody on the ward will show you because a lot of people have never changed a nappy before so please don't be frightened or embarrassed to say because it is something you have to learn to do and babies are precious and it does take a little bit of time to get used to so please say and we will talk you through it as well. Up on the slide now is just a picture of the different types of stools babies have, the different type of poos babies have, which is absolutely lovely. And I'm sure if you're sitting at home with a cup and a biscuit, this is just what you want to be looking at. But it is really important because at first your baby will pass what's called meconium and it's green and it's a bit tar-like and it's a bit black and that is completely normal. But a lot of people see that in the nappy and they panic and they worry. It is totally normal. Your baby's stool will change and develop over time and the little chart shows what the stool should look like and when. So it will be greeny black, then it will go a lighter green, then it will go to a nice yellowy colour. It sometimes might be yellowy and seedy and then eventually it'll turn brown like a normal stool. The community midwife will talk you through this every step of the way but please do not be alarmed if you see any of these stools in your baby's nappy because it's completely normal. The next thing I'm going to talk about is caring for your baby's umbilical cord. This is often a thing that we get quite a lot of phone calls about and I think the parents are often a little bit worried about. Your baby's umbilical cord is on with that plastic clamp that we discussed in the labour and delivery video. That plastic clamp keeps the umbilical cord in place. It will start to dry up and fall off normally around day 5 to 15 postnatally. This umbilical cord you can put inside the nappy or you can leave it out the nappy. Either is absolutely fine. It won't aggravate the baby. It's important to keep it clean. Again, use warm water and cotton wool and clean around the umbilical cord. Chuck the cotton wool away. Clean around the umbilical cord. Chuck the cotton wool away. Okay. Signs of infection is if the tummy around the umbilical cord becomes red, if your baby has a temperature, if your baby goes off the feeding, if your baby feels generally seems unwell or change the normal pattern. 
umbilical cord is a piece of flesh that needs to dry up and fall off it is normal for it to be a little bit oozy a little bit smelly and sometimes need cleaning that is completely normal it's sometimes signs of healing your community midwife will talk through signs of infected umbilical cord and signs to look out for but it can be a little source of worry for parents so don't worry about ringing up for a bit of advice surrounding it Topping and tailing your baby, you might have heard this term but you might not have. We recommend that you do not bath babies straight away when they're born and we normally say in the first week of life bath them once, in the second week of life bath them twice, in the third week of life three times and so on and so on until they're about six to seven weeks old they could have a nightly bath routine. We don't recommend them that you bathe them very often at first and that's simply because it takes away their natural oils and takes the natural oils and the natural smell out of their skin and it can actually make them feel more dry and uncomfortable and it also can change their temperature and often make them quite cold so what we do recommend instead is that you top and tail your baby what that means is have the baby on the changing mat in front of you again use that warm water and cotton wool and use cotton wool over one eye one eye under the chin and just generally all over your baby's body and just top and tail those key areas as that's described on the slide and what this does is it prevents your baby getting cold and it prevents taking away from those natural oils of your baby but also does keep your baby clean especially in those key areas which is where milk might go which is under the baby's chin sometimes under the baby's arm and around the baby's bits and pieces so we're now going to talk about bathing your baby as i've said we don't bath your baby every day but you do like to bath your baby and it is nice bonding experience often at first bathing your baby can seem a little bit stressful if you wanted a bathing demonstration before you went home or if you wanted your community midwife to go through it with you we absolutely would when bathing your baby it's important that you have everything ready before you actually put your baby in the water and it is step by step described on this slide and i will demonstrate it for you so i will try and demonstrate this for you the best i can obviously i don't have the bath in front of us that we would normally have so i'm just going to hold the baby and talk you through it so obviously you would get your baby completely ready and completely naked before going in the bath you might want a little water nappy if that's what you wanted but most babies just go in the bath completely naked it's important that you put the baby in the bath feet first and you then support your baby completely with one arm if you felt you couldn't completely support your baby with one arm there's no harm in having two people bath your baby. Sometimes you have little bath inserts or sometimes you have things you can put in the bath to help you bath the baby. Or if you want to have a bath with your baby at the same time, that's also fine. So you pop the baby in the bath feet first. You use this hand as a cup if you are doing it by yourself and cup warm water over the baby. At first we say that we don't want any products in the bath as this could aggravate your baby's skin so just warm water we we'll always say to wash the body first once you've washed the baby's body bring the baby out the bath wrap the baby up nice and tight keep the baby warm and then wash your baby's head by supporting your baby supporting your baby's head and just cupping that warm water over your baby's head we wash the head last as babies lose heat from their head so it's important that you do that last so your baby doesn't become too cold especially your newborn baby the next thing we're going to talk about is really really important and i think as parents of a newborn baby is the number one worry this is sudden infant death syndrome or might be referred to as SIDS or it used to be referred to as cot death this is very rare and I want to just stress that that it is really really rare that this happens but I wouldn't be doing my job right as a midwife and no midwives or healthcare would be doing their jobs as professionals if we didn't talk to you about it. Firstly we recommend that you do not share a bed with your baby especially if you've been under the influence of alcohol, any substances or you've been smoking. 
if you smoke around the baby please take the outer layers off and if you are a smoker please try and go outside and don't smoke around your baby or the secondhand smoke. We recommend that your baby sleeps in a cot, you put your baby at the feet to foot position, that means your baby's feet are at the bottom of the cot, you tuck blankets loosely over your baby, this is to prevent overheating. If you swaddle your baby, if your baby's arms are too tight, your baby can't sweat and your baby can't move and can't create that cool air getting in the blankets. And this can be linked to overheating of the baby, which has been linked to Southern Infant Death Syndrome. So please follow the guidance of your community midwives. They'll check your baby's cot. They'll check the amount of blankets you have on the baby. And they will also discuss TOG values. Please don't place anything around the baby's head, anything the baby could choke on, or that if the baby turned their head from side to side that they wouldn't be able to breathe. It is so important that you follow these guidelines and that if you're concerned or worried about any of this, you contact your maternity unit or you get your community midwife or your health visitor to assess your baby's cot where your baby's going to be sleeping. And please don't hesitate to contact us as we would much rather come out and assess a home environment than have anyone sitting at home worrying about these types of things. So in relation to that sudden infant death syndrome, we provide you with a leaflet. Every maternity unit provides you with a leaflet on sudden infant death syndrome and safe sleeping guidance. The safe sleeping guidance is on the slide as shown. We like the baby to be foot at the bottom of the cot. We like the baby not to be too hot. We say no hats indoors past 24 hours old and that you have a suitable mattress cot and sleeping area as discussed on the slide. Again, any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. It is really useful in some cases if you have this set up already, as I know that some community midwives are doing antenatal home visits still and so are the health visitors. So say your community midwife was coming for a sweep or coming to check your blood pressure or your health visitor was coming just to do your first at home appointment. While they're there, you could say, look, do you mind having a quick look at the cot, at the sleeping area and make sure that's okay? This is before the baby's even born and that would just set your mind at ease and you would know when you're taking your baby home, you're taking your baby home to a completely safe environment. If you have any questions about this presentation at all, if you felt you wanted more information on parent craft, more information on the birthing centre or anything discussed, please contact the birthing centre or your hospital that you booked at. Thank you so much for watching and I really do hope that it's been helpful.